to shift how this uh, huddle platform operates. Uh, in fact, we are in the process uh, today of shooting some additional videos about the acceleration and spread of the huddles and how and why it makes sense for, for everybody here to utilize them uh, effectively with not only the power of one, but the power of one to many. So we're in that conversation and how that gives you the opportunity to create geographic geographic and ecosystem vertical primacy. And so we'll be talking more about that as we move forward. So um, again, uh, checking in, you know, each day, um, you know, I am confident that uncertainty circles for everyone with what's going on. Um, and that is completely understandable. This is very real. Um, what we're also saying is that we have choices, as we said last night, and the beautiful job that um, you folks did on the Q&A. Thank you. This unblinded ecosystem, your unblinded ecosystem. So thank you for that. And we have choices each day of what we're going to focus on. Um, there's things that we can control and things that we cannot control. We are not controlling governmental decisions. We are not controlling um, the global economy. Um, although, ho however, if you believe in quantum physics and prayer, um, then you do have some influence over those things. So certainly, um, you know, continue to exercise your belief structures in those directions. At the same time, and it's most practical, we have, con we have control over the development of our skill set. We have control over our productivity uh, in creating things. We have limitations in some of the things we can do, but we have the power, uh, incredible blessings of innovation and acceleration. So dropping in on those points uh, on process mastery, influence mastery, self-mastery, and what it is that we can create and what it is that we can accelerate with, um, here's our, our quick check-ins for today. So let's start in reverse order today and go with self-mastery. So on the self-mastery level, um, my um, challenge to you or thought for today is as you, um, as you think about reaching out to other people, not think about selling, but actually begin to ecosystem merge and sell. And for everybody, um, a reminder or something new, if it's your, your first time on the huddle, that our, our process is to distinguish between marketing and sales. Marketing is all of the activity that you do that generates a sales meeting. A sales meeting is an opportunity for somebody to say yes or no to you, whether it be in person, over the telephone, or by clicking a button, right? right? That's for yes. So we think about um, selling, we think about, or actually, I'm sorry, marketing and ecosystem merging, whether that be to uh, have a webinar, to invite somebody onto the huddle, to um, talk to somebody about a, uh, a podcast or shooting a video, right, or commenting on your video, some interaction with a person to, to go towards a yes, what often comes up for people is our fear of rejection and failure which I will submit to you, all fears funnel back into fear of rejection and fear of failure. So we're in that space of feeling that. Um, reminder, there is no, well, let's connect to this, there is no, nothing is so permanent or so final to equal failure. So it's like there's no failure because nothing is final enough. So even if somebody says um, no or doesn't respond or isn't getting back to you, it's, it's not, it doesn't mean that there's any failure, and it also doesn't mean there's any rejection. Because the only way that we could ever feel, because first of all, on a, uh, from a not final enough, in the space of somebody not responding, it just means it hasn't worked yet. So as we were building towards, for example, um, the unblinded immersion in January, and we weren't hitting our traction point yet, it was because, quite frankly, we didn't have the right team in place yet. And then all of a sudden, not all of a sudden, through incredible hard work, diligence, through moving through many different relationships, I finally have the blessing and opportunity of meeting um, Jared and Adam. And having that, that relationship come into place very candidly changed the entire trajectory of Fernando's behavior, right? And not that his behavior wasn't right. It was he had different mentor and training in Adam. Um, there was energy and synergy that was all of a sudden created. So not only did Adam and Jared do what they did, they created an entirely different dynamic with Fernando and other people on the team from massive acceleration. My point is we hadn't failed, and it was, it was feeling incredibly stressful um, when we all came together initially. 
because we still were in the, the 100 to 150 range of people. And we went from 150 to 1800 in something like 45 days after having been thinking about connecting and building relationships with people for months leading up to that to get to the 150 number. So point, there is no failure, right? There's just more innovation and solutions to come in our self-mastery. And the only person that could ever make you feel rejected is you. It sounds simple, but I challenge you to begin to create that belief structure and condition in. So the way we change our beliefs in our self-mastery is not simply by hoping, it's not by hoping, it's by making a decision and then conditioning it in with frameworks that support the belief. So I just gave you one of mine. Like there's no failure. We're just like in an in innovation away from creating massive acceleration. There's no rejection. I believe that because the only person who's going to allow me to feel rejected is me. And I've conditioned that in repeatedly because I have people who've made fun of decisions I've made. People who've challenged the idea of uh, me shooting videos. Example, in my top 100 jury verdict in Arizona, the, uh, the person that we're up against who was – thought he was the king of the universe, had massive, um, you know, team dynamics. He was, was the one of the, the neutral people in the case called him the equivalent of a cult leader. And he would mock me and make fun of me in the beginning and say that my client had called me, had hired a coach, not a lawyer. Because he went back and saw that I had run training programs, you know, and, and I was a certified coach. So he'd make it a joke. And as the progression went along, um, I wouldn't let him impact me at all. And in fact, I was beginning to impact him and he would treat everybody with disrespect and he would treat me with respect because he was afraid of me because I was disrupting his world. So, and even if that didn't happen, he still wasn't going to impact how I felt about myself. So he uses examples of, of things that we can condition in that there's no failure, no rejection because those fears of failure, failure and rejection are the very reasons if you're not taking action today and shooting a video calling somebody to invite them on the huddle or calling multiple people to invite them on the huddle, contact them for social media. It's, it's, it's because at the root, we fear failure and rejection. And there is no such thing. So that's our self-mastery. Quick check-in for today. Influence mastery point, power of questions. Um, ask questions and listen extraordinarily more than you talk. Listen and match a mirror. So listening through questions, matching and mirroring, our influence mastery check-in for today. Don't go above the person. Don't control. Let them have space to feel safe. They're not trapped in the conversation. So you're matching and mirroring their energy, their words, their physiology. Like, I can't see them. I don't know what the physiology is. Of course you can. You can feel it through the speed and tempo they're talking. And that's how you can match the physiology without seeing somebody. And finally, in our process mastery, um, we talked about videos yesterday. Um, let, let's go in this context. Begin thinking about reaching out to people and commenting on their things. Begin to build a relationship. It's how Rob Gill created a relationship with me. He started reaching out and liking um, my, my things on social media. And you want to talk about somebody who had no fear of failure and rejection? Rob Gill commented on um, what I was posting online every time for like a year. And I'm not exaggerating. He texted me for about four months before I started responding with any degree of consistency. So use that as a process mastery barometer. Yeah, obviously, he also had the self-mastery yeah. failure rejection. However, in the process mastery element, he was contacting me every single day for months by a text message. And he might get one response for every like 47 messages that he sent. And then eventually, he and I started communicating on a daily basis. We built a relationship, a partnership, and I, uh, Rob won, but I won too. So he added massive value to my life. I added massive value to his life because of his incredible self and process mastery. So those are a couple of uh, not just quick thoughts, but formula check-ins for today. Where are you in those categories? And are you ready to stop thinking about marketing and stop thinking about selling? and take a new level of massive action or whatever you're doing, are you ready to stop thinking about the next level breakthrough and take massive action? And that comes from my heart, filled with love and truth, because what we're here to do is to create millionaires, if you're not yet, 
if your desire is to become a decamillionaire, to create decamillionaires and centimillionaires. If you have the money you want, to create the leverage you want for more time, freedom, to create other things you want, travel, connection with your family, books, programs, things that you want to create. So you create that leverage because of your financial and scaling acceleration. If you have all of those things to just connect at a deeper level in whatever way you want to have that magic appear in your life, which by the way, I'll submit is the byproduct of money and time because in capitalist structure, those are the things that stress us the most. And if you're like, listen, I'm just trying to get started. I'm just trying to make a little bit more money. Then take massive action consistent with everything we're talking about today. Shoot videos, reach out and connect with people online, invite people to the huddle and think about how you're adding value to their life so they see their future in you. That's what we're doing here in the huddles. Jared, what's present for you, sir? Everybody hear me? Yes. All right. So yeah. what's present for me? And we, we actually had this conversation this morning um, on the, the Unblinded Team Huddle. It is like right now, and, and there's a real issue, right? There's a real challenge that exists. And most people um, are just consumed by this. Like they're just watching the news nonstop. Like social media is blasting this everywhere. And what I want to challenge our movement to do is just have a different dialogue. It doesn't mean we're not empathetic because we are, like we know it's happening, but wouldn't it be a reprieve for somebody to talk about something just different, like talking about something more uplifting because this will come to an end as all challenges have in the past, even if we're in the midst of it and it feels like it won't, like it will. And the question is who will each person be when it comes to the end? And what if you were that beacon of hope today, whether it was your two minute video that you recorded or a five minute video, whether it was you reaching out to other local businesses and setting up a Zoom meeting just to talk about ways to speak with each other. Like what if you were that beacon of hope? What if you were that catalyst? So what's present for me is our movement having a slightly different dialogue or maybe even a drastically different dialogue than what everyone is hearing at this very moment. And I challenge you, do it and share in our Facebook group. What was that dialogue? Who was it with? And what was the outcome? Because maybe, just maybe, it might be exactly what that person needs. Back to you, Sean. Thanks, Jared. And, and for everybody, yes, don't hear no empathy. And we're not talking, we're not saying to make people wrong. So if Frando is like, um, you know, hey, Frando, how are you? And he drops in on, well, you know, just, oh, I just feel so wrong, so down. The re matching and mirroring doesn't equal. Dude, forget it. Come on. It's all going to be good. Like, that's the opposite of what we're saying. We're saying empathy, unconditional love, matching and mirroring where people are, and bringing them with you. Watch the matching and mirroring module, study it, bring people with you. So that at the end, the dialogue becomes completely different, but it doesn't start completely different. And so we are connecting, we are empathetic. And while I've been connecting with my family, talking to my parents about making sure they don't make contact with people. I mean, so let me give you the, the, the real viewpoint on like my last three days real quick and what I intend for today. I talked to everybody in my family, not everybody, exaggeration, many of the people in my family, and told them, especially my parents, stay inside, have zero contact with other human beings. So I'm taking this in, intensely seriously. My dad was saying he was going to go and visit with friends. I said, Dad, like, you're 75 years old or 74 years old. You have some level of emphysema. Like, if you get this, it's life and death. It's a conversation I had last night. I said, stay in the house. It's ridiculous. Stay in the house. What are you doing? Right? So I am taking this seriously. Uh, in terms of Cal U Law, we're transitioning to virtual work. Unblinded has transitioned to virtual work. So incredibly seriously, my heart aches for the fact that tons of people's incomes are cut off. Like, I get it. There's really incredibly serious things happening. All of it. And I'm going to – so those things are all real and examples. And I also talked to my son, hey, what, what are you hearing? Trajectories, what do you think on timelines? And we talked about that for 10 minutes yesterday in a very serious way because he's you know, taking a look at what's happening. So we could just you know, continue to have a, a mindset of what might be, right? And we create an entirely new program. Well, we're almost done creating an entirely new program in these three days. We've done shooting 30 modules and recording about 500 minutes of modules since Monday. And I'm proud of that. And I'm proud of Fernando. I'm proud of everybody that's participated in that process. I'm grateful um, Mona did, um, Matt did, Nicole did, 
and I'm incredibly thankful for everybody participating. We respected social distancing in the process um, and, and created massive acceleration. I'm committed to shooting three videos a day and getting them out online every day. So not only, I, don't, I wanna be a beacon of hope, but I wanna be more than a beacon of hope. I wanna be a beacon of helping people make money today or build a platform to make money in a week or to make money in two months when this ends. But I wanna help people create massive acceleration and opportunity in the midst of this. And that's what this is about for me. Like that's what I'm anchoring to. How can I add value to the world? And I'm not adding value to the world, being sucked into the dialogue of the problem. Like there's a problem and I'm not creating a cure for Corona. Like that's not what I'm doing. I don't know how, and I'm not doing it. I can pray for it and I do, right? And then I put that down and I add the value I can add to the world. And that's what's up. And you can follow whichever model you want, right? However, ask yourself, what is, what is consistent with your why and your legacy? To get sucked into the vortex or to meet people where they are, love them, communicate with them, and use these incredible skill sets that you're developing to help shift their mindset toward their money, time, and magic, and to be in a place when this ends way past where they ever would have been. That's a beautiful vision to me. Maybe it is to you. Maybe it's not. I would have a hard time imagining though there's any more beautiful vision that a, a more beautiful vision than that will be talking about this and being put into immobility with the problem. And I get it. Some people, you're not making money. Some people, it's scary as heck. I get it. The question is now, let's have empathy. My heart goes out, right? What are we going to do about it? And let's get people to the huddles, shoot videos, get people to your ecosystem, bring people to this ecosystem, and let's create massive acceleration together. And that's what is present for me today. Um, and have a beautiful and incredible day in this Why Wednesday. And on a thankful Thursday, let's get a couple of comments tomorrow. We, we, we're morphing slightly, like we want to hear voices, but some of the feedback has been we want more uh, content check-in, we want to hear more from you, Sean, directly. And so we're trying to honor that and try that on. Um, let's set it up so we hear a couple of people who have some wins and things they're thankful for to share tomorrow. Um, and let's make it happen. So why Wednesday, connect to your why. My why is to use my talents and gifts from God to create the biggest impact and value I possibly can. And that's what I'm committed to today. I invite you on that journey. It's your choice, but I invite you. Let's go get it together. Thanks.